What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the QSP Eagle in D2 Steel. Uh, before we get too far here, this knife was actually given to me indirectly by QSP. They provided a few of these to our pass around group and then the pass around group offered them up uh, to anybody who was interested in them at the cost of shipping. So um, I decided since I have not talked about a folding karambit or this style of knife on my channel yet that it might be worth doing. So thank you to QSP for providing this knife for me and thank you to the pass around group. Um, my, this isn't really my style of knife and I'm also not interested in the self-defense scene of the knife world. I understand that there's probably a lot of my subscribers or maybe at least a few of my subscribers who are interested in that. That's fine. I'm not, you're not going to get that from this video. Again, to people who have just searched this out and you don't know who I am, that's fine. If you're looking for a self-defense based review of this knife, you are not going to get it here. Um, I like to talk about, you know, whether or not a knife is practical for EDC. So I'm going to be talking about this knife in an EDC sense. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some measurements here. The overall length of this knife from tip to the back of this ring here is about eight inches. Yep. And tip to scale on the blade length, we have to turn it given the curvature of this blade. Mm, it's pro it's just under three and a quarter. You're probably looking at three and an eighth. The actual cutting edge is about three inches. Let's do a size comparison up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So you can see this is not a small knife by any measure. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the uh, Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue coming in at 8 inches overall. So this is about the same length, but it's curved. So it's, it's going to kind of throw people on size. Last but not least, up against the Spyderco Delica. Spyderco Delica coming in at 7 inches. I'm going to give you guys a demo of the action. Um, honestly, um, one of the most impressive things about this knife is the action. It's kind of a shake shut or a wiggle shut action and the detent is tuned really, really well. It has a, it's got a really nice flipping action. You know, I gotta admit, I'm actually, I've actually been really impressed with everything that's come out of QSP. And for those of you who are not familiar with QSP, you're probably looking at this going, that looks like a gas station knife. Um, and you're right, it does. It looks like a gas station knife. It looks like a knife that's meant to attract the, um, the tactical folks, um, but uh, QSP has a lot of you know really practical designs too. In fact, I've seen a lot of different things come out of QSP. Um, I see a lot of G10 and D2, and that's what this is. We'll talk more about that here in a second. Let's go ahead and weigh it real quick. Turn my scale on. Overall weight of the Eagle coming in at 5.22 ounces, unsurprising considering this is a fairly thick knife that's got steel liners that don't, yeah, they do have some milling in there, but full steel liners nonetheless. Go ahead and give it another way just to make sure. 5.29 ounces, so call it five and a quarter, just over five and a quarter ounces. This is definitely, it's a heavier knife, which is, it's actually, honestly, it's more in the range that I like to carry. Um, so, you know, like I said, or I can't remember if I mentioned it or not, this isn't really my style of knife. And I'm because of, you know, what this was designed for. This wasn't designed as a knife that you carry around and just use for regular EDC tasks. It was designed for self-defense or what, whatever. I, I think the original design came out of India and it's prob it was probably a fixed blade. I'm not even 100% sure how you hold this. I imagine you put your pinky in there and that makes it so it doesn't come out or I, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe if you hold it upside down, you hold it, you know, like this. I, I'm not sure. Um, let's go over the anatomy of the knife. Um, what we've got here is a D2, you know, sort of hawk build shaped blade. Um, you've got some two-tone here up on the uh, swedge, and then the flat is a satin finish that runs about 90, 95% the total length of the blade. And then down here, the bevel that leads to the cutting edge has also, you know, it's also black. I don't know if this is a DLC of some sort. It's very reflective. Uh, it looks more like paint, but I, I don't know. Um, you've got some lines up here right beside the QSP logo. I'm not sure what that's for. It just kind of adds to the decorative two-tone nature of the blade. You do have this slot for your finger up here, and you do have some jimping back here on the blade. I, I will say, as far as like holding this knife, 
this does feel like a fairly organic position for your thumb and this feels pretty good you know back here on the jimping there is a flipper tab that's the primary means of deployment um, and it deploys really well uh, the d10 is tuned nicely um, it's actually pretty easy to disengage and just kind of shake shut. Um, in fact, considering how awkward these styles of knives are, it, it does function basically exactly the same as any other flipper knife that I've handled. You know, it does exactly what I expect it to do, um, and uh, I don't have an issue with that. The scales are G10, and they're finished in a bizarre, I don't know if it's, it's almost like bird feathers. I, I imagine this is meant to look kind of like a bird. Now these are blue, but a quick search uh, on the eagle will reveal that there are a lot of different, um, you know, scale colors and blade finishes. And if you're into this and you're like, I don't really care what he says about the review, I'm, I just want one that's my flavor. There's a lot of flavors out there. You can, you can definitely check them out. Um, there's a bunch of different prices of these guys online. I, I've seen them up, like all the way up to like 90 bucks. I, I think you can find these for about 50 bucks. Um, I, I saw it just a quick Google search um, showed that at White Mountain Knives, they're about 50 bucks. Um, I think that's a fair price. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Um, nice, simple Torx head pivot with some, um, you know, multi, oh, there's another layer of G10 that's sort of acting as a pivot collar around it. So that's kind of cool. Um, you've got a couple, well, you've got basically a, a couple of body screws holding in the backspacer. Um, you can see here the backspacer is G10. It follows the ring all the way around. Now, the ring is actually part of the liner, so that's going to be steel. As far as how they did that, you know, I think that's really nice. I don't know if that's common as far as like these sandwich or pillar construction designs go on a karambit if generally the, the backspacer runs as part of the ring or if they leave that open. I imagine there's a lot of different designs out there, but I, I gotta say, as far as this design goes, it looks really nice. You know, the, the seams are nice, everything meets up. Fit and finish, honestly, in this guy all the way around looks excellent. Blade centering is on. That's generally the case with QSP. I don't know if we can see it, but yeah, blade centering is on. Knife is a liner lock, locking up at, I don't know, like about 50%. Um, I'm not feeling any blade play up, down, left, or right. I mean, really impressive construction. I don't have any issues with the construction whatsoever. Um, the uh, opposite side of the knife is much the same as the front, except for the pocket clip here. The pocket clip is super basic, and given, again, the nature of this knife, the ring is here. I mean, that's that's one of the main components, and it may actually be, besides the curvature of the blade, the ring is the a main component of the karambit. So there's not really another, it's not like they could mount it up here, you know. So the pocket clip, unfortunately, is extremely shallow carry. There is a lot of this knife sticking up out of your pocket, which is one of the biggest problems with a folding karambit as an EDC knife. Um, really, you know, as far as deployment, fit and finish, and construction all the way around, it's totally fine you know i mean this is um for a 50 dollar knife it's it's very impressive it's it's very you know right there along the lines of what you you should expect from you know the highest quality budget knives that are out there um on the downside besides you know just the obvious fact that it's not going to carry very well this is just an impractical knife for edc um the uh yeah sure you know the shape of the blade allows you to kind of carve into things and cover the biggest problem with this blade shape is that, you know, while it is D2, and that's great, I'm happy with that, especially for 50 bucks, um, it's it's uh, shaped in a way that's not going to make it very friendly when and if you have to resharpen it. That's just going to be the case. Um, if you got to resharpen this thing, it's, it's just going to be a huge pain. Um, the knife itself is also extremely aggressive. This is not a knife that you can carry every day and expect people to just be okay. You know, like, you know, Barbara needs to borrow your knife to cut open her bag of pretzels, you know, and you're like, hey, no problem. You whip this thing out. You're going to scare the crap out of Barbara. This is not a knife that people are okay with. In fact, honestly, as a knife guy, and a lot of you can disagree with me, like, you know, I'm like you guys. I've been into this for a really long time. If I meet somebody for the first time and they're like, oh, you're into knives, I'm into knives too, and this is what they pull out, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm instantly judging them. I just am. I'm like, oh, geez, you're in a karambits, you know, and maybe there are those of you out there who are like, no, I'm a regular knife guy. I just, I just like how karambits look, you know, it's not like, I, I, I'm sorry, but I don't think that there's really a way that people can justify carrying a folding karambit as an EDC knife over something like 
the PM2 or the, you know, the Ritter Hogue or the, just the Delica, you know, like these, these are just better knives for EDC. And honestly, these are even overkill. You know, most of what people really need for EDC is like the, the, um, Victorinox Cadet. So, you know, the QSP, um, Eagle and other, uh, Karambit style knives, I think, you know, as far as like daily carries, I think it's, um, just an excuse for people to carry something that, you know, they feel cool about, which is totally fine. I completely understand that. You know, I, I carry knives like, um, my, uh, my Microtech SOCOM Elite, that is massively overkill every day as far as an EDC knife goes. But sometimes I like to carry it because it just, it makes me feel cool to have a knife like that in my pocket. It's mega tactical. In a lot of ways, it's in the same, you know, line of knife as, as this in terms of how much of what it's made for that you actually need. You know, I don't need that big of a knife. I don't need that crazy of a knife, that tactical of a knife in my everyday life. Um, but I just like to carry it and there's nothing wrong if you like knives like this and you like to carry them But from a practical sense, it's easier for me to resharpen the blade on I mean the m390 aside It's easier for me to, to sharpen a drop a simple drop point blade um, uh, You know like the one on the Microtech Sukum Elite then then it is for me to resharpen something like this and that, that's a problem um, So the blade is gonna not be friendly to resharpen the whole thing is very it's very, very aggressive looking and it also doesn't carry in a way that's like, there's there's going to be this big honking ring sticking out of your pocket, you know, and it's just, most of this knife is just completely unnecessary. It is cool in a way, but it also kind of just looks like a toy. Every time that I see a karambit or a folding karambit, I'm like, that looks like a toy. How many people are actually, you know, need these? Like how many, how many people can justify it, you know? Like I said, the original design was a fixed blade and then we came up, you know, some, some other companies came up with um, the folding ones. So, you know, really this is gonna be a shorter review because uh, I, I can't recommend this knife. I mean, here's the thing. If you're looking for a folding karambit and you're on a budget, but you still want something that's made really, really well, then yeah, I mean, as far, I haven't handled any other folding karambits out there, but all the other ones that I've seen have been really cheap gas station knives. and if I haven't said this enough on this channel, avoid gas station knives. They are of the lowest quality that exists. They are not made out of special steel. They are not made out of anything. You should base, you should avoid them at all costs. Um, uh, materials like G10 and D2 are great. Um, what's even more important is the fit and finish and how things are put together. This knife has all of that. It has those materials. It's got, you know, a good construction as far as this goes. So if you're looking for this style of knife, and you want to pay about 50 bucks and get something that's, you know, going to hold up, then yeah, this is, uh, this is for you. But for everybody else who's kind of just looking for a practical EDC knife, this makes no sense whatsoever. It's just, it, it doesn't. Um, again, you know, I'm not coming down on anybody who likes karambits. Uh, and I, you know, I know I can't avoid, there, there's, there's people just like seething, like trying to construct their, this big long comment about, why I need to be concerned with self-defense and why I can't just but listen you can I get comments like that a lot if you if you feel compelled to that I guess the comment section is down there for people like you too so that's fine but I, I probably won't respond to it um, but you know I, it's it, I, I don't want anybody to feel you know feel like I'm coming down on that everybody can like what they like I mean I, I buy knives that make no sense all the time um, this just isn't my style of knife and I can't justify it for EDC now, I know that there are still people out there who like this and you're probably thinking, well, why did you, why did you accept it if, um, you know, it's not for you or you don't really like it? Well, um, I, I think this will make a really good giveaway knife. And while not everybody will be interested in it, um, I think there's definitely some viewers out there who would really like to have this. And I'd rather put it in the hands of somebody who will appreciate it. So um, this will be a giveaway knife coming up. I mean, um, I haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that. But uh, if you are subscribed to my channel, basically just make sure your notifications are turned on and you'll know uh, how and, and when uh, you can get your hands on this. If you're not subscribed, I suggest that you do subscribe. Um, really, you know, because I'm a knife channel and if you like knife stuff, then you're going to get that from my channel. But also, if you're interested in finding out how to get your hands on this, then subscribing would be a good way to do that. That is honestly all I can say about this knife, guys. 
If you enjoyed this video or at least found it entertaining, uh, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.